Oh, can I digress for half a second? Do you know it's the 20th anniversary of uh, Nirvana's Nevermind? And I bought Spin Magazine. They had this giant article, and everybody was talking about it. And uh, and for the majority of people were just like, dude, when that album came out, man, I was just like, fuck hair metal. This is something different, and it's fucking over. Was I the only guy who heard that album and was just kind of like, eh, hey, you, know, you know, I kind of still like White Snake. <laughs> I did. I was too far down the hair metal trail. I didn't realize how good Nirvana was. And I hated Pearl Jam. Fucking hated them. I hated Eddie Vedder's stupid I'm in a trance on purpose face. Even oh, when he sit there and he'd, he'd fucking have his arms up and his wrists were all fucking limp and he was making those faces on fucking purpose. He looked like a like he should have been on wrestling or something. He's crazy any better. Um, I hated that fucking. I still hate that fucking album. Even flow, hate it. I like their other stuff. Vitology. I like when he stopped making the faces. You know what he was like? He was like Mel Gibson in the first Lethal Weapon. When he was fucking acting like he was suicidal and it was so awful they had to make him stop. That's what Eddie Vedder was like in the first Pearl Jam. And then, and then they'd go to fucking interview. Do you ever see that interview Kurt Loder did? If somebody can find this fucking video, they interview Eddie Vedder and he's like literally in like the fetal position making this face like he doesn't want to be interviewed. It's like, Eddie, you don't have to do the interview. You could just say, yeah, I'm suffering from exhaustion. And everyone will think you have a coke problem, but who gives a fuck, right? So I wasn't into any of that shit. I, I didn't get into uh, Nirvana until probably 1993. And by then I noticed everybody was wearing flannel shirts and uh, smashing pumpkins. And all my bands were gone, banished, never to be returned until that... That metal show came back triumphantly to bring back my music. But, uh, yeah, I was late. I was definitely late. So I was, I guess, I mean, I guess the article would suck. I'm such a moron. I was upset that no one said that, basically, in the article. Like, why would they say that, Bill? They're trying to commemorate a fucking masterpiece of an album. Why would they have a bunch of people going, you know, I thought it, I didn't think anything about it. I thought Pearl Jam sucked, but I really, I was still listening to, uh, <laughs> whatever the fuck I was listening to. The fuck was I listening to in the early 90s? I actually tried to get into jazz. I was flailing and just completely not progressing in my drumming at all. So I thought if I listened to jazz, I would get better. And I like big band swing and, and you know, I, I, I saw all the great drummers. I used to go to the Regatta Bar in Boston. I saw Tony Williams. I saw Tony Williams in a fucking bar that held like a hundred people. Louis Belson, I went up and shook his hand. I'm standing behind his drum kit. It was fucking ridiculous. Roy Haynes. I saw Max Roach. I saw all these guys. Didn't improve my drumming at all. That's what the fuck I was doing. And I was hanging out with my drum teacher who was like 70 years old. Uh, I don't know if I need to add this at this point, but yes, there was no pussy in my life at that point. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, I, I kind of missed the beginning of the grunge thing. I'm not a Gen X. I think I'm old enough to be Gen X, but I'm not. I am a hair metal fucking 80s kid. That's who I am. I watched Family Ties, uh, Full Metal Jacket. The Lost Boys. That was my shit. That was when I came up. I can't help it that that's what the music... I thought Cinderella was a good band. What did I know? Just a fucking redhead kid in the middle of nowhere. Um, yeah, so they were just... Everybody was just going... I just heard it and I stopped in my tracks and I was like, what the fuck is this? It's like, how did, how did everybody know that? 
You know, I remember being annoyed by the uh, that their first video when Kurt goes to take the fucking solo and he pretends like he's tap like doing the tap on solo, like basically making fun of all the bands that I was listening to, and I was kind of like, "Who's this douche?" You know, you call that a fucking solo? Just basically playing the goddamn melody of the song through a fucking distortion pedal? I'm not saying any of these thoughts were right. I think the guy's a fucking genius and the album's fucking unbelievable. But that's where my head was at. That is honestly where my head was at. Like I when, Gun, when Axl Rose had his run-in backstage with them, at whatever award show that was when the uh, the bass player and now Senator threw it up in the air and it fucking crashed down on his forehead. And I believe Dana Carvey was hosting going, did you see what that fucking guy just did? I was rooting for Axl Rose. <laughs> I think the only thing that I did respectively, respectively as far as my m- music listening between 1988 and 1992 was I never bought Guns N' Roses Use Your Illusion 1 or 2. I hated the fucking band by that point. When they had Dizzy and Lizzy and all these other fucking guys and they had Matt Sorum and the whole fucking band was gone. And he was running around in goddamn biker shorts and he had that stupid white fucking windscreen thing. The whole, it just... Yeah, it was unfucking believable. It just went right down the shitter. So that's where I was at. I was sitting there going, I can't believe they kicked Steven Adler out. That guy's a phenomenal fucking drummer. Changed the whole sound of the goddamn band. Now Izzy left. That's what I was thinking of. I wasn't... My libido, a mosquito. Look at the windshield. Is that a mosquito? I wasn't listening to any of that. Yeah, I didn't listen to any of it. And then that fucking dude came out. That's when I started feeling old. I think when that when that album came out. And then Smashing Pumpkins came out. And whatever the fuck he was singing about. Cats, Siamese, Twins. The hell was that song? I don't know. Despite all my rage. All that shit. I was trying I was trying so hard, but by then I was like 25 years old, and I got to tell you, it's fucking over. It's over. Music is for young people. Um, All right, there you go. If you wanted to relive the early 90s through my fucking eyeballs, there it was. Jesus Christ, was that long enough for you?